I'm going to be showing you how to make a tunnel book. What is a tunnel book? Well, a tunnel book is kind of like a pop-out book because the pictures will pop out from you and it'll look 3D. And we have different layers of paper, cutouts of paper on an accordion style kind of framework. Okay, so then it will pop out at you. It's pretty cool looking. All right, in order to do this, you're gonna need your five pieces of white paper, construction paper, uh, frame pattern, glue and scissors and colored pencils. Okay, to start off, so I already have my picture all ready to go, but you will have just your white paper. So plain white paper, our first thing that we need to do is our sky. Okay, so our sky on this one, which I have already done, I have my sun up top and then I colored the rust blue. A lot of this is going to be covered up with the land down here so it doesn't have to get too crazy detailed. Uh, just remember your sky is blue, your clouds are white. Unless it's a rainy day then they're usually gray. Okay, You don't have to do a sunny day, it can also be nighttime or a sunset or a sunrise. I just decided to do um, daytime. Okay, so I have my picture here. I drew it all out. And then before I move on, I need to color it with colored pencil. Um, just a couple tips about colored pencils. Uh, you have different colors on the amount of pressure you push. So if you push really hard, oh, and I just broke it. I must have pushed it really hard. So if you press too hard, it's going to be very dark, right? And if you press lighter, you're gonna have a lighter color to it. You wanna have the same amount of pressure throughout the whole background because you don't want it to be splotchy. So you don't want a bunch of different colors happening, darkness is happening in there, okay? And then I would suggest also going the same direction all the way because what will happen, sometimes you can see the direct the change in direction. So if I change the direction here, it's going to be hard because I only have a little piece here. But if you change direction, okay? All right, so once you get done with your sky and it looks something like that, then we got to go on to the next stage. The next stage would be the background, okay? And here's what my finished background looks like a real background on there so you knew that's the finished stage of my background and you can see that there's a hole in here and we'll we'll back up and talk about that here okay so what you'll need to do so when you get your next blank page you'll need to grab a frame pattern and you're going to want to line it up on all edges. Take your pencil and trace that inside and create that frame on that white piece of paper. All right, so we have our frame, voila, beautiful. And then we will be drawing our land, our background land, okay? So I can go in here, draw my mountains, how I had my mountains before. I even have my hills come down and up. Okay, so it kind of looks like it before, what I had before. And then um, when we start coloring this with colored pencils, which I would have to add my trees in there, right, because I have my trees. Something to think about is your background is going to be have the smallest objects in it. So your trees aren't going to be very big because they're farther away from you. When we start coloring, you're not going to want to actually color the sky up here because we're going to eventually cut that out because we're going to have that as our window, which will be so we can see through to our sky that we already made. So in order to cut this out, so after I got done coloring all of 
my background. Let's see, I finished coloring this. It looks beautiful, right? How do I get in here to cut out this window without cutting my frame? Because we don't want to cut the frame. Well, an easy way to do that would be to fold your paper and come in and do a little cut here, a little splice, unfold it. And now you have that little hole there that you can cut from, okay? And you're gonna want to cut around that frame. But I wanna stop right where my ground starts. So I'm gonna stop right there. I don't wanna keep cutting because then I'm gonna cut out my picture and that's not good. So I stop at the grass and then I continue and I'm gonna follow the grass now this time. And then I'm gonna go up my mountain. So I'm gonna cut all around my background. And cut that big piece out. And then you can start seeing the window show through. All right. Okay, and we're gonna just kinda keep going here. Come down the frame, stop at the grass, or stop at the mountains there. Go up, and then there we go. All right, so we have our background cut out. And it would look great if it was all colored how it was supposed to be. So, we'll swap it with my one that's already done. Okay? So, voila, it's beautiful, it's colored, and we can see that my sky shows right through it if we put our sky picture underneath. It's great. Just a reminder, when you're doing your sky, that frame is gonna cover up part of your sky. So if your sun is too far up, you're not gonna see it because the frame is gonna cover it up. So make sure you check that, check your sky with your frame and make sure it shows through. All right, after our background is done, we go to our mid-ground. Our mid-ground is the things that are in the middle of our picture. All right, and I, here's my one that I have done. And I decided to go more of a camping, kind of fishing, fisherman's theme to it. So I have my river running through, I have my campsite, and then you can see that I already cut out my window. As you go along in the tunnel book, you're going to start cutting out more and more of your paper so you'll have a bigger and bigger window. So that you will see that my foreground here, my river, actually covers up a good part of my grass here. So if I put that over top of it, you only see part of my background now. Okay, and I cut out that big area to where my foreground started. If you don't um, line it up and measure correctly, see how if I look at it here, I cut off part of my tree with my mid-ground. You know, I'll cover it up here. You see that I covered up part of my tree trunk there? So if you don't measure it right, you're gonna cover up some things in your background that you don't want to cover up. All right, so after I have my mid-ground, I drew it all out. I cut out my window just like we did with our background there. We lay it on top, make sure it works. What I could do, I could come back in and trim a little bit more off of my mid-ground so I can see that trunk there. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Same way we did to get our window and our background, you would just fold your paper and cut into it with the scissors and cut around. All right, from our mid-ground, we go to our foreground. Our foreground is the closest thing to us in our landscape. The thing that is the biggest. All right, and that would be my fisherman. If you can see that my fisherman is really big, let's measure him out. He is bigger than the trees that I have. He's bigger than the mountains I have because he's closer to us, he looks bigger. Mountains and the trees are farther away so they look smaller, all right? 
So your foreground needs to be bigger. It also needs to make sure that you can see that he is connected to my frame. Again, I started with a white piece of paper and I traced my frame out so I knew where it would be. And then this time I just added the fisherman. I cut everything else out because I have all my land done already. I have all the land. Now I just needed him. So I just drew him on my white paper, made sure he's connected somewhere on my frame. And then I cut it out. Remember to color before you cut out. Okay. Then I can place my foreground on top of my midground, on top of my background, on top of my sky. Line it all up. And it looks pretty good besides my one tree there. Okay. From here, we're going to do one more frame, which will be our title. So we're going to just cut out just a frame as well. So our title will be at the top. I'm going to have you name your tunnel book, and then your name is at the bottom. And that will go in front of our foreground. So all in all, you should have five pieces of paper. And when you stack them up on top of each other, it looks like a nice picture. Okay, a framed picture like that. 